Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and GDC 2019 is going on right now and the Unity um, keynote just wrapped up. So this is my TLDR version of it. Uh, it was about a two hour, two plus hour long keynote. I condensed that down to about 10 or 15 minutes and frankly, I could probably do it in a little bit less time because there wasn't a whole lot here. Now there were some very impressive things but not a lot of major new announcements or anything like that. Um, so what exactly did we cover here? Well, one thing I know some of you are hoping for didn't happen, no dark mode. So dark mode is still a pro only feature Sorry, kids. I actually saw in a lot of the comments for this as it was going on. It's like, please dark mode, please dark mode, please dark mode. It seems to be the most requested feature. Yeah, it didn't happen. So dark mode is not part of this. Uh, they started things off with some stats to showcase some of the games being made with um, the Unity game engine. And they, they actually threw out a couple stats that shocked me. 45% of the top 1,000 mobile games are made using Unity. 33% of the top 20 uh, PC and console publishers are using Unity. And 70% of the top 10 current games on iOS and Android are made with Unity. So some interesting statistics there. This was John Riccatelli kind of talking. His area wasn't too interesting, if I'm honest. Now, the weird thing is there's a lot of mention of Tencent. Now, the funny thing about Tencent is everyone has heard of them. They're the Chinese mega owner, uh, but they actually own a good chunk of um, the Unreal Engine. So it's it's strange that they seem to be just about everywhere. Uh, they talked about Vivox, uh, the recent acquisition, which is used for voice chat, including in um, Apex Legends. They talked about the multiplayer service they recently bought, which is also used for, um, well, Apex Legends and a lot of other online multiplayer games. It is actually um, platform agnostic. In fact, Unity can use it without requiring an un without requiring a special SDK. Uh, they also talked about a Tencent partnership in China with Unity integration to Tencent's cloud service coming later. Um, Unity monetization. Um, they talked about for a while, including ads and AR ads. The last thing I want to see is ads AR augmented into my world, but that was there. Then um, the Activision CEO came on. He pitched Call of Duty Mobile. It kind of, the, the comment I, I kept seeing over and over again in, in the, the chat was, do you not have phones? Echoing back to the whole Blizzard announcement. So that one wasn't taken that, that great, to be honest. But now we get into the parts that are relevant to game developers. So we're about... 25 to 30 minutes in, uh, Game System Game Foundation was announced. Now, um, Game Foundation is a set of, it's the same team that gave the in-app purchases module, and it's a package that is going to do things like making inventories and stores and that kind of stuff easier to create in a codeless way. Um, it's going to be in beta Unity package coming in uh, Q2. Uh, next up, we have uh, the official announcement that Shader Graph and Lightweight Render Pipeline are coming out of preview in 2019, uh, tw sorry, 2019, in 2019.1. So this next version, which is currently in beta, when it is done, uh, Lightweight Render Pipeline and Shader Graph are going to be considered production ready. Uh, nested Shader Subgraft have also been announced for 2019.1. This is gonna give you the ability to nest uh, Shader Graphs within graphs, allowing non-technical people to mess with them and make changes, but without breaking the underlying system. It's kind of like nested prefabs, but for shaders instead. Um, then we got on to um, Disruptive Games dem demonstrated their new MOBA demo. Uh, it, sh uh, it was weird. They actually showed him showing the gameplay in uh, his iPad in his hand with the camera focused on it. But then they got into showing how it was actually used to be created using the lightweight render pipeline. Uh, they also went on to showcase the Disney mobile game, Disney Sorcerer's Arena, uh, which is also using the lightweight render pipeline being developed by Glue. And they actually do a bit of a hands-on showing how Cinemachine and nested, uh, nested prefabs and lightweight render pipeline were used to create Create it and how shader graphs were actually utilized. It was actually a neat little demo, that actually showcased one of the shaders they created using shader graph. Um, then we moved on to an AR presentation. This one was kind of cringeworthy, to be honest, but the um, the technology itself is pretty interesting. So it's available at unity3d.com forward slash mobile dash AR. Uh, this is the public release of it. Um, AR remote demonstration that kind of showed what uh, augmented reality can do. They also said that there is a full kit of assets from the HDRP that have been ported over to the LWRP so that it can be used with um, the AR stuff because the AR stuff runs on lightweight render pipeline, not on the HDRP. Uh, it's in full preview right now with a full release coming in 2019.1.
two. Then we switched over to the R&D lead. And it actually started getting a bit more interesting at this point. This is when they kind of got into the whole idea of thermal throttling. And when you're dealing with mobile titles, thermal throttling is probably the biggest bane that you will deal with. Um, this is when your phone gets too hot. So the performance starts to really crank down. And I'm talking really crank down. You might go from like 1.4 gigahertz on your processor to like 0.7 gigahertz type thing. So you do not want thermal throttling in your game. Well, what they're doing is they're um, shipping with an a uh, with a uh, framework that will allow you to actually monitor the thermal performance of your title. So adapting accordingly, you could throttle down your rendering detail or whatever, get things back under control. And they showcased it using the um, Mega City demonstration. And the downside to it that they announced is that this is currently in partnership with Samsung and works with the S10 and the Galaxy Fold. When it's coming to other Samsung S9 and Note 9 kind of devices in the near future, and that they are going to be working with other Android devices in the future to work with it or support this on them as well. So it sounds like there is a device level requirement Environment here, so this is a ways off to be able to use it on a massive number of devices anyways. Next up on stage came one of my heroes, Warren Spector, uh, and he, he came up to announce that System Shock 3 was being developed using Unity, using the HDRP pipeline. The nice thing, they did a bit of a demonstration of how the HDRP pipeline was utilized, and it did impress me. Next up, they had Oddworld Soulstorm also being demonstrated, and Oddworld, it looks pretty good. I've never really been a big fan of it, to be honest, like of the series in general, but the, the chat group, this is what they were there for for a hundred percent like odd world was by far the the thing people wanted to see and they were very happy with what they saw and then they got into a little bit of a demonstration of how animation hdrp was used um, to make odd world and they did this neat um, side by side shot of the standard pipeline standard renderer versus the hdrp and what they got out of it um, and then they moved on to the technology side of things so we got on to the data oriented technology stack or dots this is basically burst compiler job system and ecs this was kind of the future of performance on the Unity system. And Joachim, the original founder of Unity, actually came up to do this part of the demonstration. The cool thing is they demonstrated using uh, the Burst C-sharp to assembly functionality. So basically, Burst compiles C-sharp down to assembly using a subset of the C-sharp language. And then there's the Burst Inspector, which enabled you to actually see the line of C-sharp code and the assembly language it created. So if you want to get close to the metal, this is probably the the best way to do so now, even more so than probably C++ in this day and age, which was an impressive uh, move. Now, again, he got into, or Joachim that is, uh, demonstrated the Mega City demo. Uh, in this case, he actually announced the Mega City, uh, uh, all the assets and such are now available. You go to unity.com forward slash Mega City. It's a 7.1 gigabyte download, so start it now. Uh, I'm actually going to go hands on with this one at some point in the near future, so watch out for that. He also demonstrated nested prefabs in the Mega City demo, some really impressive stuff there. Then they moved on, they brought the Havoc guy out. I forgot his name, sorry about that, Havoc guy, but you are now known as Havoc guy. Uh, Havoc is a physics simulation engine. It was the, the leader in the industry. Microsoft bought it, and it kind of disappeared for a while, so I'm kind of impressed to hear from it again. Uh, but they demonstrated two things here. First off, there is the new physics uh, called Unity Physics, built on top of the, the DOTS system. So I think you're gonna to need to use DOTS, ECS, and all that stuff to take advantage of it, but there's a new physics system coming in Unity that was developed in collaboration with Havoc. In addition, in this summer coming up, Havoc have their own physics system for Unity that you're going to be able to use. And you'll be able to switch between Unity physics, the new system, and then Havoc, well, another new system, uh, with a flick of a switch. So it's 100% compatible with the existing or the, the upcoming Unity physics system via a standard interchange format that is written in using C Sharp. So that's kind of an interesting development there. Now that again is um, the new physics runtime um, is actually available today, uh, but they didn't give a URL on that one, I don't think. I'll have to look for that for a second. Uh, and then again, Havoc is coming this summer. So if you want to play with the new Unity physics system built on top of DOTS, uh, that is available now. And then uh, for the final bit, the... Um, Graphics VP came out, talked about uh, Unity Substance integration with the lightweight render pipeline and HD render pipeline is coming this summer. They announced the, the acquisition of Graphine Studio, a technology company that specializes in texture streaming. Uh, basically just said, welcome to the fold and we're looking forward to the technology they provide. And then they got into real-time ray tracing. Now this is actually a bit of a rehash of a demonstration that was done earlier today. If you watch the GTC, this is very hard to say, the GTC at GDC by NVIDIA earlier on today, they demonstrated um, a real-time rendering of 
BMWs where it was intercut with live footage or uh, sorry, uh, like real life footage and rendered footage using RTX technology. And I got to admit, I couldn't tell which car was which. And then they demonstrated the technology running in real time on a razor blade laptop. And I got to say, real time ray tracing is starting to look pretty impressive. Now, it's a little ways off. They announced that the uh, RTR, real time ray tracing HDRP, or the high definition render pipeline for real time ray tracing, is going to be available on GitHub in source form in, on April the 4th with the real time, with the uh, first full preview coming in 2019.3. Um, then they went into the demonstration team. This is the, the people that have done the demonstrations in the past, such as Adam or Book of the Dead. Um, using the HDRP, they've got a new one out now called The Heretic. And this is where they finished thing. They had it run in real time on a, a Razer laptop, and it, it was impressive. I have to admit, that presentation itself kind of was mind-blowing. And that was about it. So there's not a whole lot in this presentation. We got a few new features and functionalities to play with, um, some games being shown off. So we got the new Unity Physics to definitely check out, uh, real-time render pipeline coming soon. Uh, we've got the Mega City assets to go ahead, download and play with. So that's nice. The new uh, Burst compiler is available to play with today. And it looks like a lot of things are coming in 2019.1 so that they're not going to really be betas anymore. They're actually going to be available for us. And then there's the new AR Foundation stuff and the new uh, game foundation stuff that's available now. So those are basically the new features and functions out of this and then a bunch of, you know, gameplay footage and, you know, the typical PR marketing spiel stuff. And that was the um, the Unity presentation in a, in a nutshell. Now, really, I couldn't expect too much because this is one of the downsides of Unity going to uh, heavy-duty beta and now even alpha releases. We know everything that's in the works because they're being very upfront about it. So it's making it a lot harder to do surprises and gotchas at these kind of uh, presentations. I I did kind of think that dark mode might be one of them, but it wasn't. So sorry for you folks that want your dark themes. Uh, not happening this time, but there's some nice stuff in there. So what did you think overall? Was it an impressive showing? Was it an underwhelming showing? And what did you think of Heretic? Um, I gotta say, for real-time rendering, that was motion picture quality, and, and it does kind of show off what real-time ray tracing might be all about. Okay, that's it for now. I will talk to you all later. See you later.